Taylor pleading his case over here. Jason Garrett saying, hey, Dez. Kitchens ran down with I, Pettigrew I, all the way. I think they're going to pick this one up, Brad. I think they should. He never touched him. Yeah. Pass interference, number okay. 59. Defense, automatic first down. That's a horse spit call. God. He got a little bit of his shirt tail. They called it what happened at the end. The big problem again, he never hit you, he didn't oh, turn play. For pass interference. The defender did not make contact. There. Okay, there oh, we go. Went, oh, how about that? They waved it off. That's the call from 105.3 The Fan in Dallas, Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, and Brad Sham, the voice of the Dallas Cowboys. Honored to have on Brad Sham with us right now. Brad, first of all, Happy New Year. Second of all, Brad, have you had the opportunity to look at the play? Do you still believe that Anthony Hitchens did not touch him? Um, he did touch him, but uh, he he didn't interfere with him, in my opinion. Happy New Year to you, too. Um what I thought I saw was Hitchens get a little bit, a little bit of his shirt tail, and then uh, what we couldn't see until later was Pettigrew grabbing Hitchens' face mask. So I think you ca- the reason I think the the picking up of the flag is the correct call is that you can absolutely make the case that. In any area where the ball is going to be involved, uh, and co- I mean, you, you're not worried about contact after the ball's already gone by. So Pettigrew almost grabs his face mask and pulls Hitchens into him, and then they tangle up. But then by then the ball is gone. There's no face guarding in the NFL. The biggest problem came simply because Pete Morelli uh, made the announcement. Uh, if if he if he doesn't make the announcement, they throw the flag. They talk it over. He then picks up the flag and says, uh, "There's no foul." There's conversation, but it's not a big hue and cry. And um, this, uh, in my opinion, is a byproduct of crews not working together. They throw eight guys or seven guys together who haven't uh, worked together all year. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it was pass interference and. Um, I can't believe that it, this is the story of the game. There's eight minutes left in the game. They shut them out for for uh, they, they held them to three points in the second half. That, that, that's they got plenty of chances to win the game after that. I mean, come on though, Brad. This is clearly Dean Blandino called over and said, "Pick that flag up." Right? Isn't that isn't that clearly what happened? You, you don't know how close I am to hanging up the phone on you right now, <laughs> even though I know you're just trying to be a smart ass. Uh, you're not the only oh, radio show around the country that I'm doing today. And so, yeah, that that's insulting. That Even as a joke, that's insulting to everyone involved. Well, I, of course, I didn't mean to, to, to be insulting, but it's, you know, I, I see it everywhere today. You know, this flag has been picked up because Dean Blandino spent a day right, hanging out In my boss. opinion, that's an idiotic thing to say. All conspiracies are idiotic today. Dean Blandino spent no more time with the Cowboys that day in the summer than he spends with any other time. And nobody knows how little time he was with them that day. It was like 15 minutes. Uh, it, it's, an, it's an asinine, uninformed, short-sighted uh, storyline to drive when there's so many other reasonable things to talk about. Brad Chan, voice of the Cowboys with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. Uh, Brad, on that penalty that was picked up, Des Bryant on the field with his helmet off. Should he have been called on that being on the field? Probably. Probably. Uh, my, my, I didn't see him until after that was over, but my guess is if I'd been... If I'd seen that from somebody on another team, I'd have been, I'd have probably been screaming about it. I think that they're, yeah, you, you can't, you can't come out in the field. You can't do it with your helmet off. Can't do it. He probably should have been flagged. How much of this is just the fact that that, that people who aren't Cowboys fans hate the Cowboys? Like you see questionable yeah, calls happen. The, the, the Cowboys are the most polarizing team in the league. They they uh, have people who love them all over the league. And then that number, of course, grows exponentially, as is the case with any winning team in any sport. It grows exponentially when they win. And then when they win and when they lose, the people who hate them and love to hate them and have loved to hate them for different reasons for many years, they also come out of the woodwork. I saw a tweet today 
uh, about uh, how how uh, Governor Christie's uh, celebrate sitting in the Jones suite and celebrating with them is not playing well. Are you kidding me? With whom? He's he's entitled to root for whoever he wants to root for. Root for the Giants, Jets, Eagles, Bills. Root for whoever he wants to root for. What? Everybody just settle down. Or, in the immortal words of Aaron Rodgers to the Green Bay fans <laughs> earlier this year, relax. Yes. R E L A X. Uh, Brad yep. Champ, voice of the Cowboys, who is uh, going to Green Bay next week, as uh, the Cowboys are as well, second round of the playoffs. Brad, uh, yesterday the Cowboys got the blitz from the Lions, something that the majority of humans on this planet Earth did not see coming, including the Cowboys themselves. What happened to that Cowboys offensive line that has been touted as the best in the NFL? I think in the first half, the Lions coaches did a great job of um, – this This may come as a surprise to some folks. I know it came to some, as a surprise to some folks down here. Uh, the Lions actually have coaches who get paid and uh, players who get paid. And uh, I, I thought their coaching staff did a great job. They had three – I think this is right – three first-half sacks, and at least two of them were free runners – it wasn't a case of a guy getting beat. Uh, it was a case of the Lions anticipating scheme, blocking scheme by formation and having something designed to get a guy running free so that he can get to the quarterback without anybody touching him. Well, that, that can't happen. No one can win under those circumstances. So I thought they, uh, they kind of tightened that up a little bit. The Lions are good. I don't know if anybody checked, but they won 11 games. They gave up 17 points a game for the year. They, they averaged giving up 69 rushing yards. They, they had 42 sacks for the year. I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't just sprout out of a turnip field yesterday and suddenly become good. They're good. And, uh, and, and I don't think they won the game. But I thought that the, what happened in the first – and the Cowboys didn't play well in, in a lot of areas in the first half, but I thought that the, the areas that you're specifically talking about, I just give credit to the Lions for how, how well they played and how they coached and schemed. Brad, I actually, uh, I actually called Armin and said – with how much pressure they're putting on Romo, with that, with how much time the Lions are spending on on the Cowboys side of the line, for the Cowboys to only be trailing by ten at the half, I feel like the boys are going to win this game. Is is it more like instead of talking about one play, the fact the Lions just couldn't put the Cowboys away when they had them on their heels? That's yeah, more the key that, to this game. I, right? I, I really think the story of the game is that the Lions scored three points in the second half. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Uh, I'll go back and watch the tape today, but um, that. The fact that the Cowboys were close, and I thought that that field goal that they gave up at the end of the half was big. When it was 14-7, the NFL is like the NBA now. A 20-point lead in the NBA is nothing. You make a run, you're back in the game. And, and that's how it is in the NFL. It's kind of, it's, the rules have made it like arena football. Whoever has the ball last has a chance. And so a 10-point lead, a 7-point lead is nothing. So when they get the big play and cut it to seven, then you're back in the game. Now, when the line, and, I, and I said at the time, there was under two minutes, I think, after Williams scored the first touchdown, I said the Cowboys' biggest job right now is to not give up cheap points going into the half because the Lions are going to get the ball to start the third quarter. And they weren't cheap, but they did give up three points. And, and that could have been big. And then to get a turnover right away and turn that into a bagel uh, at the beginning of the third quarter, that could have been devastating. I mean, I've, you've seen games lost on swings like that. So I really thought that the biggest story of the game was, was uh, the Lions only scoring three points in the second half. Brad Cham, legendary voice of the Cowboys with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team you're home for New York sports. And Brad, Cowboys going to Lambeau Field. Your thoughts on that one after uh, yesterday's game? Um, I'm thrilled to be going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there's only eight teams left playing. I, I, I think that it's the Packers are favored. They should be. Um, I think the Cowboy players are confident that they uh, can win the game. And and they absolutely can win the game. I'm not saying they will. That's a really good team they're playing. Um, but they can. And so now now the now there'll be all kinds of talk about the ice bowl, uh, which I didn't see. I've talked to a lot of players on uh, who played in that game, 
and I don't think it'll be that cold Sunday. So our sideline reporter, who you know very well, Armin Christy Scales, said to me sometime in November, she said, you know what would be cool? I said, what would be cool? She said, doing a playoff game at Lambeau Field. I said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> and now she's going to get her wish. It'll, and it will be great. If you're a football fan, I think all of us, before, we, before we're broadcasting for, for whatever team we're covering, we're fans. Right. And, and I don't know how you could be a football fan and not say you were excited about doing a playoff game in Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I, I think that'll be... Um, really exciting. I'll be thrilled to be cold. I've been in the booth. The windows close. This is not, it's not a booth like Chicago where they're open all the time. If we have to close the windows, we'll close the windows. The young men will be um, out there playing hard and having fun. It'll be a great afternoon's entertainment. It is supposed to be entertainment, you know. It's just a football game. <laughs> Brad Sham, voice of the Cowboys, and Brad, uh, congratulations to you this season as well. I have not talked to you since on calling your 750th game. and oh, I, just, I just want to tell you that as someone that grew up listening to Brad Sham, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, LeVac, I would leave church, go straight to the car while my parents were talking to everybody in, in church and saying, goodbye, have a great week. I was in the car, and I, I would not miss kickoff. I would not miss uh, Brad Sham uh, starting the game and ending the game, and I, I, I've grown up with this guy, and as someone who has has been able to uh, turn Brad Sham into a mentor and an advisor like he's been to me. Brad, uh, you mean a lot to me. Just greatly appreciate that. And congratulations to uh, the 750th game that you broadcasted this year. You're, you're the best, man. I just want you to know that. Sarman, I, I very much appreciate that. And uh, I, I think, you know, it's reciprocated. And I think the most important thing of all that that you just said is that you went to church. Amen. All right. Take care, you guys.